Hi, I'm sitting here with my mom, Estelle Tubman. Hi, Mom. Hello. She's just going to, um, I'm going to ask you a few questions uh, just about your life. Okay. So you were born where? Springfield, Massachusetts. First. In a little city, 160,000 people. And we were the immigrant family. I was first generation. Family of four. Family of four. My sister and I, and my parents had come to Springfield, Mass. I have no idea how they landed here in Springfield, Mass. But I know my father <coughs> had cousins in uh, Mount Vernon, New York, where he learned the glass trade. So he actually came with some skills uh, after he arrived and had relatives here that taught him some way of taking, you know, being able to support himself. Okay, and, yeah. your, and your mom? Did your mom have a... My mom had, she was one of seven sisters. She was the very youngest. And my oldest, my oldest aunt was old enough to be my grandmother. Wow. Yeah. So, and from what I heard later that each sister that came to this country had to have, make enough money to bring the next one in line. So how many did your father, my grandfather, Ben, how many, how many relatives did he bring over to America? He didn't. He actually was in Europe and he was the oldest son in the family. So he, he was around, you know, there during the Russian Revolution, after the Russian Revolution, too. Okay. And he actually made some money by doing money changing and also selling flour that they had from their uh, mill in your, Lithuania. Your, your grandfather had a flour mill. He had a flour mill because he had been to South Africa with a whole... A, ta a taxi business. Like a taxi transport. Business. Taxi transport with horses. Right. With right. horses. But right. He came back because the family did not want to move to South Africa. But at any rate, your father made money selling flour. During, at, right came. after the Russian Revolution. And there was a famine. And I know that people were starving. So they would smuggle flour into Moscow. And you know? they would also do money changing. Okay. Barrel. His, his uh, brother, his future, future brother-in-law. Brother okay, so they were good friends. So, uh, so just tell me about your childhood as far as, you know, where you went to school, the kind of things you did when you were a kid. And what, you know, this was, let's see, 1927 was your birth year. So probably 1932 was about when you started going to elementary school. I have no idea who took me to school. My mother never went to school. Okay. My mother went to night school, okay. but so she never took me. She went me to night school to learn English, correct? To learn English, okay. right. But she never took me to school. Okay. All I know is I was having a hard time learning how to read. Okay. And my, my older, I had a lot of older cousins and one who had been a teacher. Okay. So he went to school with me to find out why I was having such trouble reading. And about how old were you at that time? Maybe eight years old, seven, eight years no, old? No, no, I must have been about seven, okay. seven years old. All right. And the teacher said to him, take her to the library, okay. Okay, that she needs to really have books. Okay. I never had a book until I was eight years old and I had a party. Okay. I never had my own book. But somehow, I have no idea how, I taught myself how to be, how to read, but I did not. I wasn't able to learn phonically. I had to learn how to. I was a sight reader, okay. and the teachers didn't know anything about sight reading. They only knew about teaching phonics. Okay. And you had a sister, correct? I had a younger sister. She was two and a half years younger than I was. Okay. And. Uh, did you guys do a lot of stuff when you were younger? Did you guys? No, I don't think we played that much. We were two different animals. Okay. You know, I, I was pretty shy and cautious and I would say quite sensitive. Okay. And uh, 
she was always out playing and <laughs> making friends and things like that. Yeah, she she was she she was quite mechanical. I was not very mechanical. I was kind of klutzy. Okay. But uh, we we were two different animals. That's all I can say. So at what what uh, what age did your mom decide to uh, enroll you in piano lessons? And did you guys? Did you have a piano from the get-go, or did you just go to No, some? we never had a piano, but my mother came from a family that really treasured music, the arts. They were very creative sisters, and my cousins were quite talented. They were very smart. Most of them lived in New York, the city of New York. And uh, music was a high priority. <clears throat> my mother started Actually, we were living through the Depression, and uh, my mother would take money from her, her allowance for food and spend it on my teacher that would come in to teach me piano. Okay, I don't remember where the piano was. Okay. I was eight years old when I started piano. So there must have been a piano in your house, right? Somebody had a piano there. Okay. Was yeah. this your house or a house that you guys were renting at the time when you were seven. Oh, we always rented houses. Okay, so you really didn't have a house until you were, but that that's neither, that's really not the whole point, but obviously that's how you started out. No, I was eight years old and I loved playing the piano. Okay. So, and I was a good student. Okay. And I had a piano teacher and I don't even remember her name. Okay. But uh, I, I... Well, you obviously, you know, when, when, when Paul and I were growing up, you uh, you always played the piano and you always listened to classical and opera and things like that. Well, I played the piano till I was I took lessons till I was like 18 years old. But then you played until you were you played a long, long time. Well, because by the time I was living in California, I was going to Santa Monica College. And there's her piano right there, and actually right up above it is a piece of artwork that Mom did. So let's uh, I want to get into the art piece, but as far as your um, so basically, you, you 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 had an education in public schools. I was okay. I was a straight B student. Okay. I wasn't among the the, the the A's, and I always thought I was just a plain ordinary student. Or, okay. You know, I went to school. I didn't make any noise. I was quiet, and uh, you were a good normal. I was a good kid. girl. Okay. All right. So then, uh, how did you get interested in? going to art school. How did that come about? Because ever since I was little, my mother would take me, my parents would take me to the movies. Okay. And I loved clothes for okay. some strange reason. Well, didn't your mom used to dress nice and she, she saved up for a lot of nice clothes? Yeah, she did. And she had a lot of nice things, And right? she always liked nice things. And I got, as I got older, I would go to the movies and see who actually did the who was the costume designer okay. because, and I would sit and I would draw all the time. When I wasn't playing the piano or studying, I was drawing. So at what point did you go to art school? And where did you go and that, was this after high school? Well, that's a big leap. It's a big leap. That was basically making a decision. When I went to uh, junior high and high school, I was trying to figure out where I would go. I Somehow I did not want to go off to college because I didn't feel sure of myself okay. in college. And I thought I wasn't smart enough to do that. Okay. Uh, so I had a friend who was also into the arts and we found a art school in Hartford, Connecticut that was gonna teach us fashion design. Okay. Actually, I wanted to be a fashion designer. Okay. But when I found out what you had to do in order to be a fashion designer, I didn't know how to sew. Okay. And I didn't know how to drape, and I didn't know how to do any of that. So I thought, well, I'll be an illustrator. I had no idea where I was going with it, <laughs> but it was something that I liked. So I went to art school for two years. And then when you came back? You and I, wait, I commuted on a train which was only 27 miles away to Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. We were lived close to the uh, so that was just state a line. So a daily commute, there was no... A daily commute every day. No dorms or anything like that. It just, you, where would make, we you had, would make a round trip for school. 
Well, it was the New York, New Haven, and Hartford, which no longer exists. Okay. And it was a train, like Amtrak, okay. that we went on every day. And it, it, was, uh, it was fun, you know, and going to Hartford. And, you know, we had models and, you know, it was just, uh, I don't know, it was just a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm jumping here, but I just, you, you got a job when you came back at Forbes and Wallace. They were one of the largest department stores during that time, right? I, when I finished art school, I needed a job. And actually, I uh, applied to Forbes and Wallace. We had two department stores, Forbes and Wallace and Steiger's. And Forbes and Wallace had its own advertising department. And Steiger's had its own advertising department. And they hired me at Forbes and Wallace. I brought in some samples of my work. And suddenly, I was in, in a studio. And we had a, 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 somebody who was a copywriter. There was, and all the ads from the department store were part of what we were given to illustrate. Okay. There were days where they were gonna have a collection of hats, or they were gonna have a collection of uh, shoes, because every department would have turns being featured in the local newspaper. And that's where I got into the whole idea of you know, illustrating, you know, I came out with this talent, whatever you want to call it, and uh, suddenly I'm doing our, you know, all kinds of ads. And this was pr the, during the war. During World War II. Right. But I was also working in advertising when the war ended. Okay. And that's when we started getting imports from places, manufacturers. Bedroom furniture, you know, furniture was suddenly. Were you, you doing know, sketches of furniture as well? No, just, no. Just they would take photos, but this was at pre. We were doing illustrations before there were photos that were, you know, brought into advertising. So fast forward, the war ended. You met Dad. You guys got married, and then you. Ended well, Dad up had come back from uh, World War Two. Yep, he'd been. And a he was a hero, a war hero. Yes, he had been a prisoner of war. He was on a B right. seventeen. Right. You guys were fixed up. You ended up getting married. You moved out to California. Well, Dad did not want to stay in Springfield, Mass. anymore. It was too cold. He had been in prison camp too long, and he couldn't handle the cold weather. So you guys moved out to California. You put your art work, your art career went kind of on hiatus because you started a family. Right. And then, it, and then it, there was a point where you just decided you wanted to be independent and go to college because you never had. No, that was a whole other story. You guys were born and, you know, I didn't go to, I didn't go back. Suddenly living in California, we had a governor who uh, was proposing free tutelage for people who wanted to go back to school, but they'd have to go to a community college. And I thought, what an opportunity. So I signed up to go to Santa Monica College. You got your and team. I started from square one because I had not had a college degree. Mm -hmm. I only knew how to do art. So you got your associate arts degree in two years and then you transferred to Northridge, which was uh, It was Cal all, State. at the time it was Cal State. Cal State Northridge. Cal, Cal State, State University. Northridge, right. And you got your degree in public health? <clears throat> First I got my I got my BA in and after I got my BA I thought well either I'm going to be a teacher or I need an advanced degree okay. in order to make any kind of extra money okay because we were having a hard time uh, economically and um, when I decided not to be a teacher I went and I got my master's in public health okay gotcha yeah. So then you got you. So basically, you worked in healthcare for probably at least twenty years or more. Yeah, I did. But I also no. I actually worked in an early childhood program. That was the first job that I had for the Los Angeles Unified Schools. But you basically put your artwork down for a lot of years. I put it down. Put it to one side. I never put my music away. No, you always practice. But at what point did you? Uh, what point did you pick up or get interested in 
doing your art again? I think basically after I got my master's in uh, public health. Okay. And you know, I, I decided... Where did, where, where did you start taking classes? You know, when I was doing it for a hobby is basically when I really got introduced. One of the, one of the only classes I took at Santa Monica College in art was art history. Okay. And I was turned on to the whole idea of art. Okay. And until our finances got a little untangled, you know, we actually, you know, I, I was a stay-at-home mom for the most part. But by that time, I was looking seriously for a job. And you got jobs, but... I, I got jobs. And, and you did well, but I just, let's stand up for a minute. I just want to, I just want to take a picture of this, uh, this, this piece that you did because it kind of, it kind of does... It kind, it kind of, of tells you the story, doesn't it? Yeah, so go ahead. Why don't you just uh, well, you tell know us what? a little bit about that. This, this was just one of my projects in, uh, in, in when I was taking art classes at Santa Monica, the Emeritus College. By this time, I was over at the Emeritus okay. College. Okay, okay. And this was just something that it was a story of my life in terms of how music affected me and how I was an artist. I was a, a, a musician, I was a cook, I loved books, and how it all intertwined. Okay. And how it really sort of summarized me as a person. And speaking of which, which we really didn't uh, discuss, we can just sit down again for a minute. Um, as far as, you're a really, really good cook, Mom, so where did you learn all your cooking skills? My mother was a wonderful cook. Okay. Um, I don't know. I was always a picky eater. <laughs> and I, I enjoyed good food. And she was a great cook. She was a great cook. And, you know, it just got to be when I was a stay at home before I was going to school, back to school, I was spending a lot of time in the kitchen. But before I, my mother, before my mother died, she showed me, and she was still well, she would sit there and show me some of her recipes. So I, I would put them down on a piece of paper. And it's a robo Yeah. You can keep going, you can just ignore it. Hmm? Just go ahead. So your mom taught you how to cook. She didn't just teach me how to cook, she showed me how to cook. Okay. So, and my mother used to clip recipes from the Jewish Forward, which was the Jewish paper, and they had a recipe section. But her, my mother's mother had, had a bakery in Lithuania, basically, and all, you know, and my mother was one of the sisters who learned how to be a good cook and also a couple of them turned out to be wonderful bakers. So they, they, they were obviously, you know, interested in good food. Okay. And so um, in terms of you, you ended up having two kids, I would be one and Paul would be number two. You were number one. And so how would you describe, you know, the family and how do you feel about the family and you have grandkids and... Well, you know what? <laughs> a lot, a lot <laughs> At this point in time, don't forget, you had a grandfather that you don't remember, Grandpa Sam. Right. And he had been in the diner business. Right. And he appreciated good food. Right. Again, and he right. actually took me to markets to show me how to buy certain cuts of meat. Okay. And uh, food was always important to your father. Right. He loved to eat good food. Yeah, he was a foodie. Yeah, he was a foodie. But somehow, there was a certain amount of creativity that went into food, too. And no matter what I was interested in, there was always a, a creative part to my life. Right. We're going to take a real quick break just because I need to change uh, the film here. All so right. we'll be right back.